great. And hello, everybody. Welcome to WD Carousel of Podcast. My name is Crystal. And I'm Ian. And today we are going to do another movie um, overview? Yeah. We kind of... Uh, synopsis? Kinda, we can't really exactly quantify them because it's just kind of us talking about a movie and then that's it. Like, we don't know. We don't have, like, a specific plan. We have kind of, like... We try to figure out how I talk about it, if I remember I think it, and the, then... the more... The, the reason why we do this, where I get the most enjoyment, <laughs> is reteaching Ian about the Disney movies. Yeah, because I either I haven't seen most of them in so long that I barely remember, or... You've never seen them I've at all. Or I've never seen them at all. Such as the case of today's movie, which is Disney's Robin Hood. Yes. And now, it's been a while... Uh, we had you watch this months ago. Months ago. It was probably six to eight months ago when I saw Something it. Something like that. And so now, pop quiz! We are going to talk about <laughs> Disney's Robin Hood and see how your memory is and tell some fun facts and yeah. go from the, there. The usual stuff. Um, so you're going to ask me about the plot of Robin yeah, Hood? Yeah, so what actually ends up happening in Robin Hood? Okay, well, if I remember correctly... Um, this this one gets really rough because it it kind of like I remember liking the movie but it never <laughs> really like I don't know why but it didn't quite have the like there's little bits like it's lots of moments that I remember okay. from it. So what are some of the moments? So, so the moments that I remember so kind of in order I kind of remember the very beginning where there's he has something happen with Maid Marian but like it's passing and then um, Prince John is being whiny about something like this is this is where i'm at right now mm-hmm. like there is like though in those two things like somehow he's connected with prince john but i don't remember how that happens exactly <laughs> and uh and then he's got uh fire Tuck, who's just a giant bear and their friends and uh this one's rough <laughs> <laughs> this one's really rough i don't know why uh this and, one is so and rough. when we went through movie options you're the one who said, yeah, yeah. let's do this well, one. I, I like the movie. I just I just don't remember any of it. No, and, and then uh, then there's lots of, like, bits of misdirection. And, like, that's, like, the bits that I remember the most. Like, the in, like, farther into the movie, there's like, lots of misdirection where he's dressed up as, like, what, a crane? Or a stork or something? And, and then he ends up back with Maid Marian again, but it's not exactly clear. And there are rabbits, but I do not remember how the rabbits factor in at all. <laughs> I really don't. I don't remember any of that. I, wow, yeah, so that, this Kay. is bad. So, help. plot of the movie yeah. goes, Little John yep. and Robin Hood. Yep. They are outlaws. It's pretty standard when we're talking about anything that that's is titled Robin Hood, Hood, right? Yeah, Little John, that was the one. Little guy. John yeah, is the bear. The, the bear. Yeah, that's the bear. And Friar Tuck, Friar is, a Tuck is a badger. Badger, that's right. But originally, he was supposed so to be, be a pig. pig. I heard about that. A pig, but they decided to change his animal character because they did not want to offend the church. Right, fair enough. Which, you know, the church is huge, and if they're trying to come after you, I wouldn't want that either. Right. But it's Disney, so they probably could have figured it out. This is also, I think, and just trying to remember back, the first movie where cross-dressing was a thing a lot. That's kind of... They did a lot of that They did a lot of that. So there was the scene where you see them dress up as fortune tellers, and they take over, and um, they are stealing from Prince John's caravan, and there's that whole scene, then there's other scenes where... You know, like you said, there was the archery contest yes. where he did dress up as a stork. That's right. Okay. And that's then not little John actually dressed up like a dignitary from someplace else. And <laughs> they did that a lot whole of, thing. They did a lot of just disguises in general, too. That was like the big thing, just mm-hmm. always dressing up. Lots of different, like even Robin Hood at one point in time when they're going towards the prison to rescue all of the citizens who had been arrested for not being able to afford to pay their taxes. He was a blind beggar. No, alms, alms oh, that's right. for the poor. <laughs> and, like, oh, he dresses right. up as everything. everything. I swear, his costume was, wardrobe has to be bigger was, than my closet. He was just, he loved the dress-up. <laughs> that was his deal. Yeah. I remember that now. 
So there is lots of mischief going on. It actually sticks pretty traditionally to the stories that we know of Robin Hood. Of yeah. Robin Hood. So you might get a little confusion there going, okay, well, what's Disney right, versus that what was, that was tricky for other me. movies yeah. have shown me yeah. before. Yeah. But there's still the fighting. There's still the romance between Robin Hood and Maid Marian. I don't know how Maid Marian is connected to Little John in this world. Traditionally, it's like an adoptive daughter, but she's a fox and he is a lion. So it doesn't seem like the lions would, you know, take a little fox under their wing, wing and yeah. be like, yeah, I'll protect this is fine. you. Yeah, exactly. Well. And the bunnies are citizens. So just but, to get that out, oh, they're, they're more just, citizens. They're just citizens, basically. Yes. Okay. Yes. That helps. I, I I remember them being there, and I didn't remember Because they had the kids, and, you know, bunnies have a lot of children. Right. And so there are some areas that they use small children, uh, bunnies, siblings to advance the plot, and you get to know Maid Marian a little bit more. Right. Yes. When... That was... One of them got over the... Uh, the arrow got the, over the, yep, the wall. Yep. And he went to go rescue it and made Marion and was there. And she was like, oh, my hero. <laughs> and it totally blowing up his ego, which was awesome. Yeah, yeah. But there are these little plot characters and everything, too. I really appreciate the variety of characters in this movie. They have everybody from shy and demure to out there and flamboyant to cross dressers right. to Why not? a little uh, Prince John who would break down into infancy as soon as somebody <laughs> mentioned his mother. I mean, <laughs> you sit there with the mommy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what character actually does that? Though I did find that he was inspired by the real Real King King. John. Yeah. Which was also known as the Fool. I guess he had emotional breakdowns like that as well. Um, Which I think is interesting to have that historical connection. Yeah, just like in there. They just dropped it in. It's like, yeah, it's all just animals. But actually, we're going to make some commentary (laughs) on actual historical figures. It's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. Though I will say this movie was originally supposed to be something different. Yes. Which is something that I found out about as well. Yes. And the character was, it's, it, the, the stories were Reynard the Fox. Reynard the, the Fox. fox yes. Yep. And he was supposed to be this deviant little fox. And it is fairy tales from Northern European, or European, Euro- Europe, European, European countries. European. European. We're going to go with it. All right. Um, German, that sort of yes. thing. Yes. And... He was a little too dark, dark of a character. Yeah, it was one of those things from, as I, if I remember correctly, they wanted, uh, they had talked about that character because they liked him mm-hmm. as early as, like, Snow White. Like, this was really early Disney, and they, could, Walt kept kind of putting it off because he's like, I I just worry about it being either not a little too sophisticated or the, the what the storyline isn't going to be going across in a way that makes a lot of sense. Uh, so they they kind of kept pushing that concept off, but they liked that kind of that kind of mischievous fox character. They wanted to make it into an actual film, but they were struggling to figure out how to make that work. And that's why they decided to hook it onto the classic story of Robin Hood because he is an outlaw. He does have that slightly bad boy, darker feel right. to him without right. him being just a villain right. in a movie and having a movie about a villain. Right. I'd love a movie about a villain right. now, right. but times have changed since when they first came out with this um, or even when they were first contemplating the idea so I can see yeah. why they made the decisions that they did. Yes, exactly. And speaking of which, it came out in 1973? It is the first movie that was not touched at all by Walt Disney. Disney. Okay. It was one where it was going to be a sink or swim for the company. Yes. If it came out and it did well, then maybe some of Disney's magic could still be in the company and the company would be viable. If right. it flopped, then really Disney was the only man to be able to... Make it happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was a spark magic of something right. that was missing. And 
to try and capture that spark while still creating new content. That's where they used a lot of old images. Yeah. And that's this is definitely a movie where you notice the rotoscoping. Yeah. So what if you're not familiar with rotoscoping, what it is is it's taking sc- shots from previous movies and then redrawing over them to be able to use the same movements, have the same interactions right right and basically basically reusing an animation sequence mm-hmm. with a new character and you know in some it's it it can really help i mean in some cases you don't need to rebuild a sequence if it's if the if people aren't going to be like i see you know like it's not a big deal in some cases cuz it can it can speed production up in some places however this movie specifically got kind of singled out by critics by, you could be like, it's like, well, that's Snow White. Oh, that's Cinderella. Like, you'd see yeah. bits that moved in they a way were... that was so obviously a different chunk of film from one of their movies that was iconic. So that it was it was like they kind of went too far with it. Yeah, there are definitely three films that you can blatantly see that they had stolen scenes from yeah. and then just basically gave the characters clothing. Right. Um, the Jungle Book is a huge one. I mean, when you're comparing Little John to Baloo, they yeah. are identical. Just because one of them's black and one of them's brown, right. they're identical. They even have the same, like, with the crazy sort of eyes and looks. It yeah. happens in both movies. Um, same with the dancing of... They did change it out, though. Lady Cluck is dancing with him versus the orangutan dancing with him oh. in Jungle Book. Yeah. But then there's other dance scenes with... Maid Marian. Maid Marian. And I believe that's Snow White that mm-hmm. they, they just they shot, instead of yeah. Instead of using the princess, they made her into a fox. Right. But and it's literally the it's same the same movement. thing. Yeah. Same and movement. And then same with the Aristocats and the music and everything. I mean, those are the three big movies that they did a lot of stealing from. What I think interesting, though, too, is they didn't just steal images. They stole voice actors as well. Oh, really? So the same voice actor that did Baloo in the Jungle Book, Phil, he did this movie as well for Little John. Oh, wow. So he's the exact same character. Character. Uh, Maybe slightly more responsible, (laughs) but legit, it's the next, it's the exact same character. Interesting. Yeah. It's, It's an interesting one. And this, this movie came out to very good critical acclaim right when it first came out um, mm-hmm. most reviews were very um, you know it's it was subtle enough for adults and kids to like it it, it was story, the story was well driven but not talking down like they had a lot of good things to say about it but then like later on as time went on people started to have more criticisms about it for whatever reason th- it kind of uh, it just kind of got it people started to d- dig deeper and started to have issues I think that happens once it came out on home ownership yeah because then they could compare them right. versus a one-time viewing, viewing right. in the movie theater and then you don't get to see it again right you're they, not going to yeah. catch those subtleties the first time around or even the second time around right. but I do believe that this was one of the first movies that did come out on home video it was one of okay. one of the first uh, of the of the more recent era. And it came out on everything. Didn't everything. It? Yeah. It came out on um CED, which is a very <laughs> weird format that not many people had. It was like a it looked kind of like a big laser disc, but like it was read with a like a physical stylus. It was like a capacitive something, I don't remember what it stands for, a disc and it, it would it was very low quality, but they were cheaper and you could use like old like uh, record pressing equipment to make mm-hmm. them. Uh, but it, I don't even know that many things that came out on it, but that one did. And it came out on Betamax and VHS as well. And Laserdisc. And Laserdisc, yeah. 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 So really, any media format that you Wanted, had at home, yeah, they had an option you had for you. To. And the other thing that was interesting to note was they chose it because it was well-liked, but not one of their critical acclaimed ones from the past that they wanted to... Do hold another, on to. They wanted to hold on to those to do another theatrical release. That was how they, up until that point, that was how the Disney made their money. So that was what the vault was all about. Mm-hmm. So they were trying to save the money by being able to take it out of the vault and display it on in another theatrical showing. But coming back to, you know, so for this one, they were like, this is a lower risk one if we wanted to try it and see how it went to pull it out of the vault and do like a home release. Mm-hmm. 
So it's not as popular nowadays, like you mentioned, but in its day, it really was a big movie. It was the top grossing movie of the time for yeah. Disney. Mm-hmm. It made nine point five million, which nowadays in 1972, that was quite a sounds bit. like nothing. But yeah, yeah, back then that was yeah. a lot. Yeah. It was a big movie for Disney. And m- most people don't even remember that it exists now. I know it's. It's, uh, it's, you see the character, like, seeing the, you know, Maid Marian and Robin Hood, like, as foxes and all those characters, you recognize them, but you don't think about it as being, like, the Disney movie. Like, I don't really mm-hmm. ever, you know, up until at the point that I saw it, I didn't really think about that. Mm-hmm. Um, there were a couple of deleted scenes. Okay. Uh, the first one was where Prince John was actually writing a letter as Maid Marian. Oh, funny. To set a trap for Robin. Could you imagine? And I, I mean, right now there are links to it. If you can, you can find them of like storyboarding and scripts, but there's not any action sequences to it. But okay. could you imagine the effeminate John Writing being the- like, "Dear Robin, <laughs> how I dream of you." <laughs> Please attend me at this. Right, right, right. <laughs> and then the other scene, they were going to have an alternate ending where yeah. Robin actually was injured and he and Mamarian had escaped to the chapel where they were cornered by Prince John and the sheriff and they were going to die. And that's when King Richard busts through and saves the Dang, day. Exactly. I'm happy they went with what they did. I don't need to have our hero of the movie be rescued by somebody completely brand new. Yeah, they talked about him a little bit, but you don't see King Richard until the very end of the movie. Right. Um, a couple of fun little things. So we've talked about the rotoscoping and how they redo things here. When there is the scene after the archery contests where it comes out that he is Robin Hood Mm -hmm. and there's the chase scene and the battles and everything going on. They actually use a couple of colleges fight songs during that time. So during the chase scene, they're using fight on, which is the university of South California, their fight song. Okay. And then the time that lady cluck is essentially playing football. (laughs) <laughs> with it's her versus all the hippo yeah. guards. Yeah. Um, they're playing on Wisconsin from the University of Wisconsin. Oh, weird. As a fight song. Oh, so funny. if you're familiar with those, you are in a Disney movie. <laughs> I don't know them. I've never heard of them. But it's pretty obvious that she's playing football. So it kind of makes sense that uh, they'd have a fight song in there. Yeah. It fits. Yeah, works. The song Love was actually nominated for an Oscar, which I think is pretty awesome because it was in a category with a lot of classic traditional movies and for it to be an animated feature going up against standardized movies was a pretty big Big thing. It didn't win. But, you know, 1974, at least you nominated it. Good job. Exactly. Good work, guys. And let's see... No, I got everything here. Yeah, that's... Uh, it was the, the character of Robin Hood was originally going to be voiced by a guy by the name of Tommy Steele, who was a... Or is. He's not dead. Uh, he is... <laughs> He was ki- he was kind of a, a teen heartthrob at the time, or, or a decade, mm-hmm. or a five years or so before this. Um, maybe it was a decade before, um, in England. Oh. And so he was kind of the, the first one over there that kind of mm-hmm. blew up big. Um, and they brought him in to, to voice Robin Hood, and they, they they just didn't think that he could bring enough heroism to the character. Like, he didn't have... I'm like, that would be the worst reason <laughs> to get fired from an acting job. Like, he just... They, they, he couldn't bring the voice together to create that mm-hmm. kind of character. Like, it just didn't quite come through. Mm-hmm. So... They, uh, they ended up going with who they ended up with, and I can't yeah. remember his There name. were a lot of British actors that they used voice actors for this movie, yeah, yeah. but there are a couple that are very much not. Like, you're talking about the Sheriff of Nottingham. Right. Such a southern twang! Yes. Now, and then you bring you, it's interesting you bring that up, because the other thing they wanted to do early on in the development was set it in the Deep South. 
and, <laughs> and I didn't they know had, that one. They had just finished, uh, or very recently finished, Song of the South, or somewhat recently, and the backlash that they were starting to get mm-hmm. from that was starting to come in, and somebody finally was just like, you know, maybe we don't put it in the Deep South. We had some problems last time we did that, so it ended up just being, you know, not a But they still kept the country influence by yes. the singer, you know, yes. the rooster character yes. Yes. who is the bard and carries the story right. along. He right. has a very southern twang, twang. too. Yeah. yeah, so it was... It was not, uh, it, they didn't eliminate all elements of it, but no. they definitely changed the setting because that was the original idea. It was more of a Briar Rabbit kind of vibe, and yeah. they, they kind of wiped that out. So, very, very interesting that they, that they did that. Robin Hood and Little John Just walking through the forest. Is exactly. exactly. <laughs> that feels so British to me. I know, very, very <laughs> British. Welcome to Disney. Just. Smooshing stuff together. <laughs> but that song gets stuck in my head. Ooh la la, ooh la la, golly, what a day. <laughs> Never ever thinking there was danger in the water. They were drinking, they were guzzling down. Yeah, that's. Yep, yep. That, it's totally British. Yep, definitely. Okay. Nailed it. <laughs> okay, yeah. on that note, I think we should wrap this up. <laughs> if you guys are interested, check it out. It is still available on. Media sources, I just recently looked on my on-demand cable network, Mm. and it's there. So if you don't have your own copy but are interested in watching it, it is available there to check it out. So don't feel like it's back in the Disney vault and you can't touch it. Yeah, right. Disney vault, such a joke. Anyway. Disney vault is something completely different. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, yeah. But... Thank you so much for watching and listening. And this has been WD Carousel of Podcast. My name's Crystal. And I'm E. And I hope you have a great big beautiful tomorrow. Beautiful tomorrow. Just a dream away.